it's Greg here. I'm going to be talking about Vim and some changes I've been making to my Vim config lately. Um, and I want to talk about how I've started to focus more and more on NeoVim. So this started about a month or so ago with the Vim Conf that took place online. And for me, that was a bit of a turning point because I felt there a very strong sense of community around NeoVim and a hopeful future. The sense that it's a project that has many stakeholders who are actively involved that are going to carry it forward for the foreseeable future. Um, a feeling that I never had back in the early days when it felt like an effort by one or two people. Uh, it's really grown since then. And uh, I don't get that feeling about Vim. I get the feeling that while NeoVim is a true community-driven open source project, Vim is a personal project that happens to be open source. And so Vim is probably going to die when Bram loses interest in it or is unable to work on it anymore. Um, and if I look historically, there have been a number of decisions that Bram has made that I have not really agreed with. Um, I'm not going to get into the details. The point is, uh, I felt a lot more comfortable investing in NeoVim uh, having spent that time VimConf this year. Up until then, I'd always tried to maintain compatibility with both Vim and NeoVim. So I'd make sure all of my config worked on both platforms. Um, even though I've been using NeoVim now for something like maybe three or four years. I'm not really sure I'd have to go back and look through my doc files or my screencast to see when I first started talking about it. Um, but I basically hit a turning point where it's, I came to the conclusion that I felt comfortable writing stuff that only worked on NeoVim and having Vim degrade gracefully, where de degrading could mean that some fancy feature just wasn't there at all, um, as long as it didn't throw an error. Um, so the first thing I did was rewrite one of my plugins in Lua uh, for speed, and I did a screencast on that uh, maybe a few weeks ago, and I was delighted by how fast it was. So inspired by that, I decided to take other parts of my config and start putting those to Lua as well. Uh, and so I'm just going to show you the before and after. And if you're interested in how I did this, um, I actually recorded a live stream today uh, for the first time. I'm not much of a streamer, um, so there are probably a few rough edges, but I'm, I'm also uploading that to the, challenge, the channel if you want to check it out and uh, see how I did it all. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to show you the, uh, the before and after. You can see here I've got on, on the left pane, uh, this is the master branch. So I just merged this stuff. I had it off on a topic branch on the side, and I've just updated the master branch. Um, and so we'll be able to look at what the code looks like now. Um, and on the right, I've got a scratch directory where I've just checked out the old version of the master branch. And so I'm going to open Vim in both places. Now, when I type Vim, uh, it's an alias for NeoVim. So we're re we, we are looking at this in NeoVim. Um, so let me go to where this all started, which is in this auto commands file. Um, and so we can see what it looks like there on the left. Um, I'm going to see what it used to look like over here. Uh, on the right. So let me make this pane bigger. Now this has long been uh, a file that I'm not particularly proud of because it's incredibly unreadable. So if you look at this, you'll see uh, there's a lot of uh, feature flag stuff going on in here where you know, if has, if exists kind of stuff um, to decide whether or not to activate certain features. Um, and then of course we have these horrible, uh, stupidly long auto command lines that I haven't wrapped onto multiple lines um, that extend you know, off the right edge of the screen. Um, and all of this stuff is in service of fancy blurring and focusing, or at least mostly. Um, you'll notice a lot of these, uh, a lot of these um, auto commands end up calling. You know, if I should color column, then you know do something. If I should curse a line, then I should do something. And we end up um, you'll find the word blur and focus here in a few places as well, right? So uh, I'll show you what that actually does. Um, you'll notice that I have two panes open now. When I move between them, the one that is not in focus has a kind of blurred appearance. So it has syntax highlighting turned off, it has most of the color turned off, um, and uh, the background looks dull. Um, and so that's what all of this does, uh, but it is horrid, horrid to look at. Um, so basically I wanted to port all of this to Lua. So let's have a look at what it looks like in Lua. We'll go over to this instance, and it is just so much better. That's it. I've got to say, I'm pretty proud of how clean that is. Uh, and so what are the differences? Well, the first thing is because I don't have to care about Vim anymore, I've decided that I'm only going to make this work in NeoVim, um, I can do all of these checks up front. Uh, and of course, one of them is if you're in NeoVim. If has NeoVim, then we're going to set up these auto commands. And if not, then we're not going to do anything. 
And I, I think that in practice, NeoVim is basically always going to have these, so I could probably even remove those. Um, and I might do that at some point. Uh, but they're not really cluttering things up at the moment, so I'm going to leave them there for now. But basically you'll see, whereas the old one had potentially multiple uh, commands keying off of any given auto command event, what I've now done is I have exactly one function that I call in response to a given auto command. And that's why this is so clean now. Um, and if we go here, I, I don't know if the navigation is, no, the navigation is not smart enough to find that. Um, so if we go here under auto commands, this is where all the stuff is now. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into detail here, uh, other than to observe that Lua is a real programming language, and it's, compared to writing VimScript, a pleasure to write. Even though it is, I would say it's a quirky language, uh, it is nevertheless uh, a real programming language. And so there's, I have this feeling when I'm writing in here that uh, I can understand the code, I can refactor it, I can do reasonable things with it, and I don't have to do horrible, awkward syntax or hoop jumping just to get VimScript to do what I want. So if we pop over to the uh, old implementation, and we go to auto commands, auto commands, I think that's where most of the ugliness is. And you can see here, this is where I um, had the most of the old implementation, I think. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on this, but let's, let's look for type. That might reveal something, type. Uh, the, one example of where VimScript is awkward is that order, like order. Yeah, here you go. This, I, I love this one. It says here, note that order matters here because of VimScript's insane coercion rules. When comparing a string to a number, the string gets coerced to zero always, which means that all strings equal zero. Every string. So you have to do this in the right order. You basically have to check whether or not you have a string and then fall through. Um, and so there are a few places in my dot files where I have to do this kind of thing. And like, this is kind of like knowing Internet Explorer quirks. Like your brain shouldn't have to hold that information. Like th this technology just, just shouldn't exist. So uh, it's a great pleasure to go from this crazy language where it, I mean, as far as I know, it doesn't even have an AST. Uh, it's evaluated by scanning the text and incrementally internal state is built up as you go which is why you know crazy things happen like if you th if you raise an error or throw an error in the middle of a conditional vim will complain about not seeing an end it's like well of course you're not going to see the end because you stop reading the file you know it's just just maddening and i i couldn't care less if this stuff is corrected in vim script 9 which is rumored to be out soon because i don't want to learn a bespoke language written by somebody in their pet project, I would rather learn a language like Lua that I can use in a bunch of contexts. Um, like when I'm using Hammerspoon, which is a great system utility tool for uh, Mac or IMAP filter, which is a way to write, write, write IMAP filtering rules on a remote server or World of Warcraft or, in, or many other games that use Lua as a script to make extensions. Like learning Lua is an investment. Learning VimScript is, I don't know, it just seems unnecessary in this day and age. So uh, this video has wound up a little bit ranty, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, I'm going to close that. I'm going to look towards a bright new future where uh, more and more of my dot files are in Lua instead of Vim. There are going to still, I think, always be elements that are in VimScript uh, because ultimately, you know, an auto command, what does an auto, auto command do? It evaluates a snippet of VimScript when something happens, right? So you're always going to have to dip into the VimScript land, but my objective is to spend as little time as possible in VimScript and get back out into Lua as soon as I can. Um, and just to give you an example of how this is going to play out in Vim, uh, when I type backslash Vim, that's going to basically bypass my alias. So instead of Vim, uh, instead of NeoVim, it's going to run the real Vim. I mean, you'll see here, it, it loaded just fine, but there's just functionality in here that doesn't exist. So for example, I don't have any of that fancy blur stuff. But I don't care because any machine that I'm actually going to work on, seriously, I'm going to clone my dot files. I'm going to make sure uh, NeoVim's on it. Um, and I only really use Vim on remote servers, which I'm almost never on because in theory, you're not supposed to be SSHing into remote servers. You should be using Ansible or some other tool to configure them uh, in an automated fashion. Um, so that's all I got to say about porting uh, Vim script to Lua. Uh, so I hope this has been interesting to you. Please subscribe if you want to have more Vim content from me in the future. And that's all for now. Bye.